Testing. Yeah, it's on. My mom saw it. So it comes out of here, mom, or what? Well, I am, because I think I should be. <laughs> you're overpowering me. Because you're good, like, I don't know if you even want I don't want to
Good morning, everyone. Good morning, everyone. Happy Sabbath. Oh, you are awake on Sabbath morning. It's good to have you here. The sun is shining. It's supposed to be a beautiful day. And even if it's cloudy, you know the sun is still shining above the clouds. So no matter what darkness we go through in this world, Jesus still shines. Amen? So without further delay, I'd like to invite you to bow your head with me. Let's have prayer. And Dr. Edwin Noyes is with us again today. And he has a lot of material he'd like to cover. And I know that you are interested in what he would like to share. And so let's pray that God will be with him. Dr. Noyes, would you come up front here with me? And I'd like to pray with you and for you. Let's bow our heads. My gracious Father in heaven, we are very grateful this morning that you have called us to be your servants. You have called us at such a time as this in earth's history that we can be faithful lights in this world of darkness. We pray, Lord, that you illuminate our hearts and minds this morning. We pray that you'll be with Dr. Edwin Noyes and Eric Wilson as well. In each one of us, Lord, help us to have willing hearts and ready minds and ears to hear and understand and know you, our friend and our Savior, Jesus Christ. And in his name we pray, amen. Thank you. Welcome, everybody, this morning. Our fourth session. Do you remember what we had on the first session? That was the history, the story of our health message. What did we cover the second session? Two great deceptions. And do you remember what we covered last night or something about it? The Babylonian mysteries from Eden to, ba- to, to Babylon, where we showed the very foundational principles from which Satan works his deceptions. You're very well aware that the Bible warns us about deceptions. Remember when Jesus was on the Mount with the Mount Olives with the disciples and they looked down upon the temple. And what did the disciples ask Jesus? What did they ask him about? What would be the signs at the end of time? Help me with what he answered them. What did he say would be the signs? He says, look out for deception. Why didn't he talk about some great calamity or battles or Armageddon and so forth? He talked about deception because he mentions that the deception will be so severe that if possible, even the elect will be deceived. Do you think it's possible that the elect could be deceived? That would be ourselves here. It's very possible and it does happen. But the elect, as they recognize that there's been deception, they will ask for forgiveness and move forward. Back in 1999, I was invited to Russia to present this uh, exposure of the the healing mechanisms that were popular in that country. And I wondered when I went there, I was really nervous. Here was my first seminar going to a country I did not speak the language. I would be talking to the health educators. These were doctors, nurses, pharmacists, dentists ministers that were educators, health educators for each conference. And I was very nervous. I would be facing people that were, some of them earning their living doing these things. So what, what could I do? It was the presentation what I showed you last night and what we will be looking at this morning that turned the tide in their minds. They had those that were doctors had been taught these things in medical school as a part of their practice. And so I wondered about it and what to do. Last night and this morning what we're going to present made it so they accepted. And here's what I heard later when this message that I shared, the health educators took it back to their churches and the message came to me that while they were presenting, or certain ones are presenting, 
somebody would stand up in the audience and say, let's all get on our knees and ask for forgiveness. What a, what a change. And so as we look at this, you may see or hear about something that you've been interested in, and it's a tendency to be angry at the one that exposes. I couldn't be caught into any spiritualistic thing. There's, there's a response. But let's think about those in Russia that said, hey, we've been deep into this. Let's get on our knees and ask for forgiveness. So as we go forward today, let's think about the attitude that each of us would have. Now, I've been known for being a bad speller. And uh, I've embarrassed myself many times in these presentations with my spelling. So I have this morning, I was thinking there would be more of the young people, but if anybody sees a word that's misspelled, I want you to write it down and I will reward you with a little booklet. <laughs> now I've got maybe 10 or so of them there, so, but if 10 people come, I'll give 10 booklets. Be watching for a misspelled word. All right, let us proceed. Babylonian mysteries in the Christian civilization. What are we talking about? That's sort of a strange one. Let's take a look at the Bible verses. Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits, whether they are of God, because many false prophets have gone out into the world. By this ye know the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is of God. We go over to 1 Corinthians 12, verse 10. In this chapter, it's talking about the gifts of the Spirit that are for the benefit of the church. Apostles, preachers, prophets, so forth. But one day I noticed there was a, another one that oftentimes had been skipped over. And let's read there. To another, the working of miracles. To another, prophecy. To another, discerning of spirits. Why did that interest me? And it, because I was sitting at a table, uh, a camp meeting in Oregon. Uh, I was presenting in the ABC my book to those that came by. And a person came up and really told me off. He was angry and really very exceptionally rude that you're here presenting this topic and you ought to be preaching the cross. So that evening I didn't sleep too well. I thought about it. What does the Bible say? Well, I thought all through the New Testament, Paul is, and the other writers are giving admonition to people, pointing out problems. And then I came across this verse that perhaps there are people that are, have gained the knowledge in certain areas. Are they to keep it just to themselves or are they to share it? And uh, then we came to uh, yet another verse. For what do righteousness and wickedness have in common? Or what fellowship can light have with darkness? What harmony is there between Christ and Belial? between the devil. And Ephesians 5, 11 really brings it down as we come to that, 5, 8 to 11. For you were once darkness. Remember the, the night Eric says darkness in the Greek means twisting the truth, the, the original word, twisting the truth. For you were once darkness, you were once twisting the truth, but now you are light in the Lord. Live as children of light. Have nothing to do with the fruits of darkness. But what? Rather, expose them. How are you going to expose them if you don't talk about them somewhat? And so I felt better and went to sleep. <laughs> and there. Today I'm bringing to you something that I usually don't bring for Sabbath school time or church time. But this program that I present is built on a sequential basis. The first night, the second night, third, fourth, they build one upon another. And so this is in the sequence. I would have usually given this in the afternoon. But as you go through, you'll understand uh, it gets into some things that you say, what are you doing with this subject in Sabbath school? 
Stay with me to the end. Don't leave, because then you will see. If anybody leaves, they may leave with the wrong impression. But I think it's a very vital thing to understand because I'm wanting to help us understand the things we're exposing aren't just, well, that's bad, that's from the devil, but they're a part of the end time movement of deceptions. This is the thing we need to really comprehend. We don't want to be a part of it and be a Satan's agent by promoting things that are used as evangelistic tools entering wedges to change our worldview to that of the Eastern worldview. And that's the purpose of them. So looking here now, the medical doctrine or dogma of the pagan civilization was based in astrology. 100% of all of the Chinese, all of the Hindu, all of the Indian, from their own writings, 100% based in astrology. The dogma of the vital force, the vital life force, those hundred names, synonyms that go with this that we dealt with last night. So important to understand. And then there are a myriad of methods and practices used to, to attempt to influence that supposed mystical uh, power or energy. The Bible teaches we're to, to separate from evil, not to blend together with it. And God gave information to the Israelites as they went across the desert as to diet, as to hygiene, how to deal with infectious disease, standards that are still the standards of public health today. So the Bible has been proven over time to be true. The Hebrew nation, they believed in a creator God and they believed that health was attained by staying in harmony with God's laws of health which are in harmony with the physical laws of the universe. We read the verse the other night here, that's Exodus 15, verse 26, but bringing that to our mind again, if thou wilt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, and wilt do that which is right in his sight, wilt give ear to his commandments, keep all of his statutes, I will put none of these diseases upon thee which I have brought upon the Egyptians. For I am the Lord, that healeth thee. Now Israel did not always stay in harmony with God's will. And eventually because they went after foreign gods, God allowed them to be taken to Babylon for 70 years. When they returned to Cana, never again did they go looking and worshiping false idols. They were broke of that pattern. But the devil had another way of infiltrating into their civil civilization. Following their return, their heir too long was found a secret society called the Kabbalah. History cannot isolate exactly when it showed up in Israel, but it was there insidiously over time. The Kabbalah was a secret society taking things out of uh, different religions at that time, putting them together in a a religious format, and it, the Kabbalah promoted mystical healings, and that's the part I want to bring through that eventually was carried on down. Today, the Kabbalah word is very common. It was very popular for people of Hollywood to be members of the Kabbalah. You probably well uh, remember reading in the papers here a few years ago about that. Here is the official symbol of the Kabbalah. You have up there the philosophy, astronomy, virtues, truth, so-called alchemy. Ah, very interesting. Kabbalism, key of the occult society, sciences. We're looking at this because they had healing mechanisms in their teaching, and really they're kind of a foundation for things we're seeing today, and we'll be going through some of that history. The doctrine of theosophy, a mystical insight to God. They had magical healing. And they would take alphabet letters, arrange them in certain order that supposedly would be protective. We'll look at those in a moment. And certain numbers, you'll see there on the, down here, there are certain alphabet uh, and numbers are arranged supposedly with power to heal. 
let's go back for just a moment. Even pronouncing the ineffable name, wearing of omelets, using talismans, and certain mineral compounds were a part of this. And here we have one of those talismans. This would be put at the head of a uh, bed of a nursing mother to protect her newborn. They have a variety of these, symbols, letters, words, supposedly with power of healing. Another one, a protective talisman for the newborn against illness and the evil eye. You see here some bowls that would be formed and the writing in them and they would be given to a newlywed couple. It was to bring uh, peace, harmony, and goodwill for their life. There are about 2,000 of these still in existence. So a type of healing, type of belief in symbols, signs, actions that would bring relief from illness. My wife and I were traveling in Israel in a rented car some years ago. And we came north of uh, Galilee, the Lake of Galilee, maybe 15 or so miles. And I saw a sign on the highway and it pointed up a hill. It says, the home of the Kabbalah. Who? I says, that's where we're going. <laughs> and so we go up that hill and here's the old city of Safat. And it's a Palestinian city. But as we walked along the, the walkway there, we looked down an alley and there we saw another section. It was a Jewish section. And so we moved down and that sign you see there, which you cannot read, says, taking pictures on the Sabbath prohibited. Oh, this says, this is interesting. So we went a little further. And this is, we looked up down the street. This is an ancient old town. And I ran into one of the teachers of the Kabbalah. And I says, I'll be polite and ask him if I can take his picture. And he was irritated and said no, while my wife was taking his picture. <laughs> A synagogue we found up there of ancient origin. Very interesting. Let's go to the time that Simon Magnus was in Samaria. Remember Peter came and Simon wanted to buy the power to lay on hands and have people receive the Holy Ghost and Peter told him to get lost. Well, I'll tell you what Simon Magnus did. He became a thorn in the side of the early Christian church in several ways. For one thing, he followed Peter to Rome and he was instant. Uh, one of the ones that instigated Nero to crucify Peter. I read this recently, and I think it was Acts of the Apostles. And he became sorcerer. He became the healer for Nero. Nero made an a image of him or a statue, and they put it along the river that went by the city. But it's interesting that Simon Magnus became the originator of the old Gnostics. You've heard of Gnostics, Gnost Gnosticism, knowledge. And it, this group was a thorn in the side of the early Christians, bringing in heresy, false healing. We're told here by William Still in a book called The New World Order that the Gnostics were born of the Kabbalist. Simon Magus, founder of the Gnostics. And they were the practitioner, he was a practitioner of mystical healing. Involved, it involved pantheism, monoism, nature worship. And uh, the deification of humanity. Remember last night we learned that this supposed universal energy that's supposed to flow through all mankind, through everything, is divine. It makes us have divinity within. And so the deification of humanity uh, was a product of this teaching of the Gnostics. We come down to our day, or in the 1800s, when this book was written, Morals and Dogma, by Albert Price. This is one of the main books for the Masonic Order. I have a copy. It's not easy to come by. 
And in this book, there is a reference, 40 pages on the Gnostics and their relationship to Freemasonry. This talk is not about Freemasonry per se, but it comes in here and you'll see why in time. And in this, these 40 pages, it speaks about the origin of the Gnostics as being out of the Kabbalah. The Kabbalah was the source of occult sciences and the Eastern religions. So we look at the progression of secret societies down through time. We're looking at a 2,000 year period, essentially here. Kabbalah, Gnosticism, Manichaeism, that had to do with Iran and that area, various Islamic secret societies. When the Knights Templars on the Crusades got over in that part of the world, they got affiliated here with some of the Islamic secret societies. And then they came back to Europe bringing all of this esoteric knowledge with them. Then came the Rosicrucians and the Freemasonry. Now there were hundreds of other small secret societies that branched out from these. Hitler came out of a secret society. Gnosticism, what did it teach? Luciferian occultism controls Freemasonry. Luciferian cultism is therefore not a novelty, but it bore a different name in the early days of Christianity. It was called Gnosticism, and its founder was Simon the Magician. We're looking now to, down through Christian society, the Western world, how that dogma that was the Eastern religion, how it was brought through Christianity through secret societies, the basic doctrine of divinity within. Why are we looking at it? Because we're going to look at the day when it blossoms forth, our day. Secret uh, societies have subverted the Christianity for 2,000 years, and its goal was to do just that. The devil never quit. When he was uh, lost the battle at the battle, uh, at the... Uh, Tower of Babel, shall we say, he was thrust out. He had tried to form a one world government that would suppress all knowledge of God. And God thwarted that by changing the languages, it went through the world, but he never quit trying to bring the world together under one power, his power. That's where we are today, his continued approach. And that healing, physical healing, is the right arm of his evangelism. If we can realize that much of this alternative we call alternative, there's some alternative things that are perfectly fine, but those that with the mysticism, if we realize that their purpose is to help us change our worldview from that of a Judeo-Christian to that of the Eastern worldview. He wants to cause us to lose life eternal. That's the whole goal for us to be destroyed. And that healing is so attractive to people because when you're miserable, you're sure grateful. I had a toothache here not long back. And when that dentist solved my problem, he was a hero. I've had dentists be heroes several times. And that pain really gets to you. And so when a person has maybe arthritis, inflammatory arthritis all over the body and he does something that seems like it heals, well, that's pretty meaningful. That's powerful. It's hard to resist to say, hey, this I shouldn't do. But in this, there's the promotion of Luciferic worship in a disguised form. Now, I take you to a particular graph. At first, it's going to be confusing to you, but this is an extremely important graph. I borrowed this from Gary Kaw in a book called En Route to Global Occupation. I have permission to use this. I had an opportunity to speak with this young man, extremely handsome young man, many years ago, got deep into some uh, types of things that he realized he shouldn't be there. He was a very devout Christian, and he got involved in some, an organization that was working toward one world government. And so he took out, he quit work, and he spent his time going around with Protestants and other meetings, trying to help them understand what was happening in the world. He has lectured with some Adventist people at certain times. Let's look at the top here. 
ancient mystery religions, and that's uh, the ancient religions out of Babylon, out of Egypt, India, Persia, Greece, based on pantheism, based on the principles we presented last night, these ancient religions. And then from out of there, we, come, we have the witchcraft, sorcery, divination, spiritism, most occult practices, Eastern religions, Hinduism, Buddhism, Shintoism. So down this line, we have this doctrine, this dogma carried in the East through religions. But what we're showing here is the same doctrine, the core of it, being carried through secret societies in the Western Christian civilization. And then we come finally down to this line here. This is the time of the French Revolution. The word Illuminati tells us where we are. That was out of the 150 uh, lodges of the Masonic Order in Paris. Uh, they stimulated the revolution of the French Revolution. But it's the doctrine, it was the teachings that came with that revolution that we want to pay attention to. The revolution was over with and the reign of terror after three and a half years was suppressed by Napoleon. But the doctrine that brought that about has continued to this day in secret societies, hidden down and is now popping up in various ways. So we have the, this teaching of pantheism down through these organizations. And then Marxism came out, American secret societies, uh, the European International Banking, World Council Churches, so forth. There were branches off of there. In fact, I have in my pocket here a graph that shows at this time the variety of organizations that formed. Uh, they went underground. If you go to the Revelation 11, there's a beast that comes out of the bottomless pit. And that beast is, is, is actually the doctrines that was being taught in this French Revolution that's being propagated and is the core of these healing mechanisms. Here's a graph that shows you a lot of, it's hard for you to see, but it's many different organizations. The revolution disappeared, but that teaching that brought it about went underground and has continued to this day. One little, one little box up here, which is Marxism, I could show a large graph that showed how that spread to the world. This was made in 1922, this graph. So what it is now, it's amazing. This, most of the revolutions that we've had since that time have been come about because of this doctrine being promoted. It's what's being promoted in our country right now. The very same thing. So what we want to look then, this knowledge of pantheism coming down through, then we had in 1875 the Theosophical Society formed. And Mrs. White called that spiritualism. Over here were many different uh, cults that formed. And then here we have, as the end result of through the Christian society, the end result of down through the Eastern religions, we come together and it promoted and brought forth the New Age movement. At, for a while they called it that, then you see the East-West, that became a common frequent uh, expression to ex tell us of the same thing and today it's called progressive. Here we have the devil's counterfeit religion, counterfeit plan of salvation through the Eastern societies, coming secretly through the Christian society for 2,000 years, infiltrating and putting out these things. And out of that came, in the early 60s, this New Age movement that came across the world and into the 70s. Many of you that are older remember suddenly the hippie movement, the Woodstock, and so forth. This is what's coming forth. Let's follow a little more, get a little more knowledge here. I'm going to skip that one. Let's go to the theology of these uh, secret societies. It's based on dualism. Remember, yin yang, good and evil. The tree of the knowledge of good and evil was the source. And that Lucifer was the god of light. 
Adonai, Jesus, was the god of darkness in this teaching down through these societies. And it promotes Luciferic worship by the use of signs and symbols. Healing practices are used to attract people to this doctrine. Theosophy. Will Barron. Do you remember the name Will Barron? He wrote the book Deceived by the New Age. He was a New Age priest for 12 years. And he was head of the Theosophy organization in Los Angeles until he was converted back to his original church, Seventh-day Adventist. He had come out of England and got into this over the years, and he was rather high up. He went actually to the Vatican, their Vatican over in Scotland, and worked there for six months uh, on there. He is a part of this network that I've talked to you about, the website that we have. He is a part of it on there. And so these are things that this theosophy was... It's a teaching of Eastern dogma, doctrine, mixed with some other uh, aspects. So as we go forward, that beast of the Re Revelation 11, out of the bottomless pit that we read about in the Bible and this events, and then we don't read anymore. But the beast did not disappear. It's with us today. And we'll come to a comment here from the book Education that will interest you greatly in a moment. Napoleon put it down because the three and a half years of the reign of terror in France, Napoleon put down, but it went underground and has never left the earth, this doctrine and this movement since that time. So we review it here. The uh, secret societies carried it on. It became a worldwide movement, humanism, socialism, communism, all out of that. Many others, and theosophy is what we're looking at tonight, to this morning. The doctrine of spiritualism, theosophy. And this comes from book Education 227, 228. That men are unfallen demigods. That means they have divinity within. That's the teaching we've been hearing about each night. That each mind will judge itself. And here we have the worldwide dissemination of the teaching that led to the French Revolution. All are tending to involve the whole world in a similar strug struggle similar to that which convulsed France. At the end of time, that same teaching, same doctrine, will cover the world. We're in it. These anarchists you see today, it's what they, this is where they come from. Worldwide dissemination. Great controversy. We had this twice before. We repeat it. Through two great errors, the immortality of the soul and Sunday sacredness, Satan will bring people under his deceptions. While the former lays the foundation of spiritualism, the immortality of the soul, the latter creates a bond of sympathy with Rome. And the Protestants of the United States will be foremost in stretching their hands across the gulf to grasp the hand of spiritualism. As we spoke the other night, there's not an organization, big organization, spiritualism that, con that Protestants join with. It's that the doctrines of that move into their church and they accept it. Amen. And unfortunately, we're experiencing some of that. I just about got into some of this. And as Eric has explained to you, he had some years that he was experiencing that. They will reach over the abyss to clasp hands with Roman power and under the influence of this threefold union, this country will follow in the steps of Rome in the trampling of the rights of conscience. My goal here is to help us all understand that many of these healing modalities are helping move into this very movement. It's far more than, well, that was the devil and I shouldn't do it. This is one of those end time movements that are trying to bring the world together. And if we realize that, we're going to be missionaries and helping others understand. Let's look at this lady. Eric brought her picture out the other night. Down through time, there have been great uh, people with great uh, influence over the world. In the late 1700s, early 1800s, 
It was Emanuel Swedenborg of Sweden, the great spiritualist that influences vast numbers of people in the world. Then following him, Helen Blavatsky became the great spiritualist. She even had great influence over Hitler. He studied her works. And this lady was a member of the uh, Masonic order. Women had a Masonic order in France. And so she was the head of that. But in 1875, she and Henry Walcott in New York, they were in New York at that time, Henry Walcott and Hen Helen Blavatsky, guided by an ascended master, spirit, they formed the Theosophy Society, 1875. And this was based in pantheism, monism, a spiritualistic type movement. They went secret for a hundred years, and in 1975 they came out in the open. And in our papers of the nation, it was uh, advertisements about these, and many of their adherents began to climb the mountains shouting, Oom, Oom. Remember last night we talked about that particular sound? And this was to bring them power. I remember reading about it at the time. And so that began the beginning of what we call the New Age Movement came through these societies. The next individual in this movement was Annie Besant. When um, Helen Blavatsky died, and she had been head of the Masonic Order for Women in France, then Annie Besant became vice president. She moved up to president and continued that. But we move on to the next lady, Alice Bailey, which was uh, an English lady but living in America. And by dictation from spirit, she wrote a, a number of books. Some said 20, some have said 24. I have not counted them, so I wrote 24. By dictation of spirit guides, she wrote these 24 books, which are the formational, the foundation for the New Age movement. Down through the secret societies came the movement, began to bring all over the world at the same time the rising of these strange healing techniques. It wasn't something that rose out of because somebody experimented and found something worked. This is brought into our civilization by spirit. The New Age movement is the initiator of and leader of the mystical healing teaching practices in the world. I've traveled many nations in the world and every place I go I see the same signs and symbols and on uh, windows painted uh, inviting in for these type of therapies and things of the mystical arts. In my office, I received a magazine. I didn't order it, but it was a very uh, large art, uh, magazine, a very shiny, expensive type, and it began to come each month called The New Age, and it was filled with healing techniques, alternative-style healing techniques. That's all it had. No advertisement, no nothing else for other things. They would sell those things, but there was, and there was no identification where it came from or who printed it. it kept coming and then one day it changed its name to East West ah. and uh, it was very interesting and I couldn't figure out where it was coming from another East West I've kept those magazines I still have them now in this little book that had that graph I showed you by Gary Kaw he had it listing in there a friend of his was able to finally find an address where he could send and he wanted to advertise in, the, in that magazine. But this, this letter came back from the Supreme Council of the Masonic Order. They were the ones sending it to my office. And uh, so the Supreme Council here, thank you for your letter of inquiry in interest in the new age. Because we do not carry advertising, I am unable to comply with your request. So here we have the uh, solution as to where this magazine was coming from. From my office, uh, less than half a mile was the headquarters in Oregon of the Masonic Order. So they may have sent that. Now we've got a little problem here. All right, now. We don't want to move along. Where's our technician?
Okay, now we're going. Thank you. Just a touch of the finger, but it's got to go the right place. <laughs> there are many who shrink with horror from thoughts of consulting spirit mediums, but who are attracted by more pleasing forms of spiritism, such as the Emmanuel movement. The Emmanuel movement was named that because they started in the Emmanuel church, and it had to do with mind therapy. And still others led astray by the teachings of Christian science and the mysticism of theosophy and other oriental religions. And here we have kind of the summation why I brought this down. A power from beneath is working to bring about the last great scenes in the drama. Satan coming as Christ and working with all deceivables in those who are binding themselves together in secret societies. Let me repeat here where a power from beneath coming out of secret societies is bringing on the end time problems. We've just traced some of that history. So it can give us more confidence that what we're trying to expose here in this seminar has great significance. We don't want to be a part of the devil's deceptions in the last days. Today, the mysteries of heathen worship are replaced by the secret associations and seances, the obscurities and wonders of spiritualistic mediums. The disclosures of these mediums are eagerly received by thousands who refuse to accept light from God's word or through his spirit. Believers in spiritualism may speak with scorn of the magicians of old, but the great deceiver laughs in triumph as they yield to his arts under a different form. Now I'm going to take you to a comment by an author that is a promoter of the secret societies. He is uh, telling us what their purpose is, but he's not a critic. He is a promoter. A very important work of the secret societies has always been the ultimate unification of world religions. These healing mechanisms are a part of that to try to bring us together as a one world religion. The aim was based on the restoration of the pre-Christian mystery tradition, Old Babylon, which had been persecuted by the early church and forced to go underground in medieval Europe, and the recognition that all religions had originated in a universally, universal spirituality referred to as ancient wisdom. Now he continues, it forms the basis for the ancient Egyptian mysteries, Gnosticism, Esoteric Christianity, the Kabbalah, the Hermetic tradition, alchemy, and societies such as the Templars, Freemasons, and Rosicrucians, the occult doctrines of geomancy, alchemy, astrology, sexual magic taught by these secret societies were used as symbolic metaphors illustrating the progression of the individual from material darkness to the spiritual light of understanding. Revelation 16 says, I saw three unclean spirits like frogs. They are the spirits of devils, the working miracles, which go forth unto the kings of the earth, of the whole world, to gather them to the battle of the great day of God Almighty. We're in the middle of it. The last great delusion is soon to open before us. Antichrist is to perform his marvelous works in our sight. So closely will the counterfeit resemble the true that it will be impossible to distinguish between them except by the Holy Scriptures. By their testimony, every statement, every miracle must be tested. And as we close here, we are coming right upon a time when Satan is to work with all manner of bewitching influence. And those who are charmed with them now or give them the least countenance now will be all ready to be swept right in to act a part with the devil then. He is to work miracles, and this wonderful miracle working power is to sweep in the whole world. At her day, she said, it is now just beginning. We need not be deceived. Wonderful scenes with which Satan will be closely connected will soon take place. God's word declares that Satan will work miracles. He will make people sick and then will suddenly remove from them his satanic power. They will then be regarded as healed. 
these works of apparent healing will bring Seventh-day Adventists to the test. It's getting close to home, isn't it? Many who have given, had great light will fail to walk in the light because they have not become one with Christ. Thank you very much for your kind attention. So those that are conducting the Sabbath school, I let you continue from here. Thank you.